I'm uh, 94 years old now. Uh, I've been married to Bobby for 71 years, and uh, we've always had a, a good marriage and, and raised a nice family. And uh, I, I'm real proud of that. And uh, I'm proud of everything I've ever done for people, you know, and helped them out. And people that's given me jobs, I appreciate that, you know. So I've had a very, very wonderful life. Yeah, been, been very good, very good life. My grandfather came to Lano County in uh, 18 and 54. And he settled around Kingsland where the two rivers meet, to Lano and Colorado. And then uh, he had uh, 11 children. And then he moved over here on my ranch and uh, his wife passed away and he married my grandmother. And she had four children and then they had four more. And my father was in the last group of the four. But my grandfather, oh, he died before I was born, but my mother would always tell me a lot of stories about him, you know. And he said when he'd come here, the grass was stir up high to everywhere. Just, and no underbrush, it was just occasional live oak tree when he'd come here in 1854. But my mother told about him all going on these trail drives. He went to Kansas three times, you know, with cattle. And uh, they'd rope them and brand them and everything before they started up the trail with them. And uh, then he'd be gone nearly all year. He'd come back and anyway, open range, all open range, you know. Feel the ridges, the valley, ridges of your bones. They'd give him beef and pork, hogs, and, but he worked a long time for $25 a month. And then he left there and went to work on a buck and a dam. And he, he got 85 cents an hour. And he always said that was the most money he ever made in his life, you know. He, he got 85 cents an hour. That was in 32 or 33, 19. We raised most of our food. We had a, a pretty big garden, I'd say two or three acres garden. And uh, we raised no, nearly all our food and, and uh, we'd kill a lot of hogs and my daddy cured the meat and, and uh, everything. And then uh, we made a lot of sausage and my mother would take these old bed sheets and she'd sew them together and make a, a deal about that big around and you'd stuff that full of sausage and hang it up and smoke it. And it, it cured itself, you know, and it was good. When we got on the ship to go overseas, they were one or two jumped off. And I don't know, there were probably two or three, they lost their mind. They just went from, you know, they just sat down and they wouldn't go eat or anything. Well, there's, there's one old man in our outfit. He had nine kids and they drafted him in the army, you know. <laughs> you know, he just, that's all he'd talk about, you know, he was, but uh, I, he found, I don't know whatever happened to him, but he, he, he'd talk about his family, how bad it was. We, there was a guy named Ray Click. He was a pretty rough character. Uh, he lived right down the street from us. And then there was another guy who lived right up the street, and his name was uh, Charlie Walker. And he worked for the city, and he drove a maintainer. Old Click got to thinking, well, him and his wife had something going on, Ray Click's wife, you know. So anyway, he got his gun, and he walked right down the street. There's an alley there, and this guy was fixing to get on the maintainer. It was noontime when, after he'd come back. And he said, stop, Walker, said, I'm gonna kill you. Well, Walker turned and run, because old Click was a good shot. He killed him, he killed him right there. They started trying Ray Click for the deal. Well, they had the trial in Lano, and they thought, well, it was, you know, too many people knew him, and they'd, they'd move him. And my parents were witnesses. We had quite a few, all the neighbors were witnesses. 
we moved it to Georgetown. Didn't, didn't give them the death penalty. But away in 1936, my, well, uh, Texas went broke, the state just broke, and you could buy people out of the prison. They got $1,500 together, and they went, bought Ray Click out of prison. You know, and, and he come home, and they gave him an honorable discharge, honorable. He carried the mail, like y'all would go over and get your mail there. And I used to ride with him some, I had some hogs. He'd charge me 10 cents to ride, and I'd get off, and, he'd, and uh, I'd feed my hogs, and uh, he'd come back and pick me up and take me on into town. Yeah, when I was a little boy, you know, uh, oh, I, was, I guess five, Dr. Gray said, son, how would you like to have those pigs? And I said, boy, you bet. I'd love to have them. So I took them home, and, and uh, and I'd feed them, we had a milk cow then, a pretty good cow, and I'd feed them that clabber, you know, and they'd just nearly burst, you know, they'd get so full. So one day I took one, it was raining, and I slipped one out and took it, put it in my bed at home, and I was gonna sleep with it. And my mother caught me. <laughs> that was that was a disaster. I got a little thrashing for that. She said, no pigs in the bed. <laughs> I had a deal with Twin Mountain Supply in, in San Angelo, and they were fence supply deals, and they sold lots of cedar posts, lots of them. And I made a deal with them to buy the cedar post. You know, they, they, they bought them all, and they come ever. They'd buy, you'd come to your cedar yard, and you had it all stacked up and all counted, and, and the number was on the stack, and they'd get the, we'd get the numbers, well, they'd write you out a check for it, and then they'd come and haul it all off, just a load every day, yeah. Big load, 18 wheeler every day. Uh, uh, 13 years I cut hose, cut with an axe for, and I had some real old trucks, you know, they, no brakes on them hardly. When you start down that hill, you'd put them in compound, and that would kind of hold them. But, you know, we had a lot of wrecks with them, you know, people that, jump out of them and let them go and and the, the axle would break or something going to, and you know it's pretty dangerous i rode a bus from lano to uh, austin and uh, we went to long grove and went across the bridge on the colorado river where the where the buck cannon is built now and went on, and it'd take nearly all day to get, it's all dirt road all the way to Austin. All the way. And ch uh, chug, you know, chug cold, and, and, that, and all the doors on that old bus would just rattle like a, I remember Barton Springs, I went swimming in Barton Springs, you know. And that's when I ate the first hamburger I ate. They made the hamburgers there, and she bought me a hamburger. <laughs> I thought that was something. Yeah.